Hi guys, it's Kaz and today I am very excited to be sharing with you the best books I read in 2020. So today I'm going to be discussing seven books and these are in no important order. I am essentially going to be going through these in height order from tallest to shortest because I prefer the way that that looks when I put them on the shelf behind me, so that's what we're doing. First up we have The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. This is an author you might see a couple of times on this list and I'm sure that's not a surprise <laughs> to some of you because I think N.K. Jemisin has fast become a new favourite author of mine. The City We Became is a book that my book club and I discussed earlier on in the year so I will actually have a link in the description to the live show that we did because we do go into a little bit more detail in case any of you are interested in some more of my thoughts as well as some of my friends as well. Oh, I'm just in awe of N.K. Jemisin's creativity and imagination. I the worlds she crafts are so fascinating and this one in particular is set in our world but with an interesting fantastical element overlaying everything. In this version of our world every great city has a soul which means that once a city has grown large enough and been thriving for a period of time these cities kind of come alive, they are born in the form of a soul or multiple souls. New York City in fact has six and in the city we became we meet the six people who live in New York who are awakened as the souls of the city and each of these souls are basically the different boroughs in New York. And I'm not going to say too much more except for the main kind of tension of the book comes because New York is in this transitionary period of having these souls being born, it is very vulnerable and there might be something out there that wants to take advantage of this vulnerability. It's just such a fascinating concept and I love how it was executed. I loved getting to know all of the characters. Some of them we do spend a lot more time with in this than others, but I hope to see a little bit more of them in later books. But in this one in particular, I really liked how we focused a lot on the Bronx, um, who is a queer Native American woman. We have a very diverse and interesting cast of characters in here as well. And I'm just really curious to see where the story is going to go because I feel like the scope is going to get bigger. I think it's going to be really cool to see more of the other cities from around the world too. We do meet a couple in here but yeah definitely a lot of opportunity to go on a larger scale, meet a lot more people, see more of the world and the cities. Such a cool idea. Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman. I am just a sucker for these books. They are so wholesome and sweet and beautiful but also it touches upon a range of different conversations which I think are really important and in particular with some of the different experiences of queer teens coming out, coming to terms with their sexuality, um, mental health, eating disorders, becomes a bit of a topic in this one as well. There's a whole lot jam-packed into these and it's so beautiful. It is a graphic novel series. Being the third in a series I'm not going to touch upon details in this one but overall this series is about Nick and Charlie, two boys who go to the same high school and the blossoming relationship that forms between the two of them. But of course also having to deal with some of the things that pops up along the way as life happens and other people do shitty things. But it is so wholesome and so wonderful. It has, but there's just some wonderful friends in here as well. And I think we also see some like additional content from some of the other queer characters in here too. It's like mini comics and wonderful things. It's just, <laughs> it's very wholesome, very sweet, very loving, very wonderful. But like I said, it does touch upon some more serious topics as well. So just a thing to keep in mind if there is some content that is triggering for you. I can't recommend it enough. Okay, we're going to talk about another graphic novel and that is Check Please by Ngozi Ukazu. Another one that I think is just so wholesome. So sweet and cute. Oh my god. Okay, so we follow Eric Biddle or Bitty as he is just starting out in college. He's a freshman and I think he's just joined the hockey team and he's meeting a whole bunch of new people, experiencing college and developing a little bit of a crush on the team captain. One interesting thing about Eric is that he vlogs. So I really like how the story was kind of framed. He's obviously sitting in his dorm talking to the camera, talking through all the things that have happened um, and then we also do see like the snippets of what he's talking about. He also likes to bake which I really love. Seeing Biddy 
talk so passionately about one of the things he loves to do. Like he loves to bake and share that love with other people. Like he likes to bake for his teammates and just seeing their really adorable reactions when they're enjoying the things that Biddy makes. Oh, so cute. It also made me rather hungry while reading this as well. So just a thing to keep in mind. I really love wholesome and sweet stories. They just make my heart sing so much. And the relationships that Biddy develops with his uh, teammates is just so pure. I loved seeing all of those develop and just, they just, they really care for each other and they really look out for each other. Just so much love, 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 love. I finally, finally jumped onto the Mistborn bandwagon. I have yet to continue because I then switched my focus to reading the Stormlight Archive books. The Final Empire is set in a land that has been under the rule of this Dark Lord for about a thousand years. And the Scar people have been dealing with a lot of the brunt of it and living in constant fear and misery. They're an enslaved people. And we follow some very interesting characters. We have Vin, who is a Scar street urchin, and she is taken under the wing of Kelsia, who is a brilliant criminal mastermind and first of all starts teaching her about allomancy, which is the magic system in this world and it kind of stems from like ingesting metals but he is also trying to lead a rebellion to overthrow the Lord Ruler. I don't even know where to begin with this one like I enjoyed every single minute of it. I thought the characters were brilliant absolutely brilliant. I really liked Vin. I liked getting to know her as a character and learning about the magic system through her education as well. Kelsia was just everything. <laughs> the kind of ragtag crew of um, rebels so much banter, so brilliant. I mean, I'm just flicking through my annotations for like my favourite moments and scenes. A lot of them are like banter with all of these characters. So pure. It was just such an entertaining read. Yes, the banter helped with that, had plenty of laughs, but I was just so intrigued by the world and the magic system and the politics was very interesting and just so many sticky situations. I enjoyed every minute of this book and couldn't recommend it enough. And I'm kicking myself that I haven't yet read the second book, but like I said, focusing my energy on the Stormlight Archive and then we will return to the majesty of this series. The next two books I'm going to discuss together because their books one and two of a series and were the reasons why I fell in love with N.K. Jemisin. So we have The Fifth Season and The Obelisk Gate, books one and two in the Broken Earth trilogy. If you guys have not read the Broken Earth trilogy yet, please, 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 with the cherry on top, do, because it is so worth it. I think it's a masterpiece. I think it is absolutely brilliant. How and Kate Jemison's brain, like how does it work? In the fifth season we are introduced to this world with a vast and rich but mysterious history. It's set on a large continent and at the start of the book there is this big rift that crosses the continent and is spewing out deadly ash and is slowly, slowly killing everything in sight. We meet a woman named Essen who right at the start of the novel as things are about to go to shit <laughs> she discovers that her son has been murdered and her daughter is missing and she embarks on a journey to find her missing daughter amidst you know the end of the world. In this world there are people called Origines who wield the ability of orogeny. I, I never describe it well, so I'm, I'm going <laughs> to rely on the definition in the appendix here. So, orogeny is the ability to manipulate thermal, kinetic, and related forms of energy to address seismic events. I don't know how to express my love for this series and like just how brilliant it is and the way that it's crafted. Like, it was just such a unique and interesting writing style. And one of the characteristics of that writing style is that it is partially written in second person which I thought was really interesting but I will say that at the start of the fifth season I was thoroughly confused heavily bamboozled if you will it got to the stage where I was like am I just too dumb to understand what is going on but slowly the pieces started fitting together and I'm not the only one who's experienced this so if you have tried reading the fifth season or just know that if you do attempt to pick it up and you're a little bit out of your depths just keep pushing through it does piece itself together and it is so worth it like I think this series is a masterpiece. I think it's wonderful. I'm trying to think of actually helpful things to say rather than just saying it's brilliant, it's great. Like, 
where do I begin? <laughs> it's just so much, so much. I just think that Emma N.K. Jemison has a real way with words and her world building as well was out of this world. Like similar to The City We Became, I just really like the concept, but you get to see kind of more of the imagination uh, in here because it is a, an entirely kind of fantastical world. It's not the earth that we know. And there is a big history of fifth seasons as well, which is what is happening at the start of this book. There is an appendix in the back that goes through the fifth seasons that have happened previously and how, like how long they went for, how catastrophic they were. It's just so freaking fascinating. The characterization some really interesting and diverse characters in here. I think this is the only book, at least that I remember, where I've read about like a polyamorous relationship as well, which I really appreciated. I thought that was super interesting. Just so, so many brilliant characters. I'm absolutely terrified to read the third one because she doesn't hold back. There's a lot of things that happens on these pages. The characters are put through a lot. So I'm really terrified to see what happens in the stone sky, but I'm still looking forward to it. I just want everyone to read this, this series. I just, I really do. I really do. It's the not really last book I'm going to be talking about, I will briefly mention or show you my honourable mentions. We have Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the second in the Stormlight Archive, which is a huge epic fantasy series. So far we have the first four books in the series out. It's supposed to be ten books and each of these are over 1,000 pages long. So it's a commitment, but it is worth it. The scope of it, oh my lord, the world, the characters, there's so much, so much going on. I did really, really enjoy the first book, Way of Kings. I gave that one 4.5 stars. Still loved it. I guess I could technically have squashed it in with this as well. But I did find that it was quite slow. Um, it did take me a while to get into. Whilst the pacing of the first book was a lot slower, Words of Radiance is, it hits the ground running. I guess I should talk a little bit about what this series is about before I get any further. So, in The Way of Kings, we're introduced to the continent of Roshar, which is plagued by huge, catastrophic, destructive storms. Like, you do not want to be out in one of these storms people don't usually survive. And on this continent we have humans across various kingdoms and then we have the Pashendi and the kingdom of Alethkar have been at war with the Pashendi for like six or eight years ever since the Pashendi betrayed them and assassinated their king. We meet some really interesting characters. We have Kaladin who is a slave. We have Dalinar who is a high prince of Alethkar. We also follow the perspective of his son Adolin and we also follow a woman named Shalan who goes off in search of Yasna Colin, who is Dalinar's niece, uh, in order to train under her. I don't know if that was confusing or not, but I'm gonna leave it there before I get any further, because it's such an epic series. It is intense, it is emotional, it is brilliant. I just had to go and walk around for a little bit because I've been standing here for so long <laughs> and my back is starting to ache, so I forgot what I was talking about. But the characters in this series, so well realised. There's plenty that I love, there's plenty I have mixed feelings for, and they're sure are some that I loathe, detest with my whole being, but they're all really brilliant characters. And even when I hate seeing them on the page, they still bring a lot to the story. We once again have a wonderful crew of characters, bridge for the banter, the love, the camaraderie, the respect, Bridge for forever. The world itself is so fascinating. There are definitely some things that I'm still kind of confused about, but I think that's a product of the mystery. There's a long history in this world that is largely unknown, kind of to do with the Night's Radiant and what that all means and what happened in the past. There's a lot of knowledge that's been lost throughout time. Pieces are slowly coming back, but I'm just so curious to continue the series and just see what's going to happen. So these were the best books that I read in 2020 and I just want to take a moment to very briefly mention some other books that I really, really enjoyed. Not necessarily perfect, but they were still really wonderful and enjoyable. A great time reading these. The City of Brass by S. A. Chakraborty. I'll admit the first like 200 pages of this were quite slow and I attempted to read this twice but once I did get past that point it really came together. The ending wowed me and got me very excited to continue the series but it's just such an interesting and rich and magical world. I am absolute trash for Avatar. 
I love the show so so much and I just I can't help myself I must read the comics as well and I really enjoyed reading The Rift. If you love the show I think you'll also really enjoy the comics. They're set after the TV series and kind of continue the story but also give you a little extra information as well. Uh, so if you love Avatar, I think they're worth it. With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Listen to the audiobook for this one and would highly recommend. But I just really enjoyed getting to know Amani and her family, all of the different relationships that we explore, her love of food. She's just so passionate and strong-willed. Really loved her as a character. And this was definitely another book that made me hungry while reading it. And lastly, This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal et Motar and Max Gladstone. This was such an interesting book. I didn't know what to expect from it but I thoroughly enjoyed it but it was just so beautiful really enjoyed the writing the development of the relationship was really interesting and it's just such a short read would really recommend giving it a go all right that concludes this video I hope you guys enjoyed watching it I would love 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 to hear about the books that you enjoyed the most that you read in 2020 feel free to leave those in a comment down below I'm always looking for more recommendations but thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you very soon in a new video and until then I will talk to you in the comments bye